With this, I'll, I'll, I'll try to wrap things up. What this is, it brings into uh, critical relief um, the entire Maimonidean and medieval philosophical enterprise. I have over here a collection of the essays of Hannah Am, famous Zionist writer. Uh, big Apicorus, not a little one, big one, right? The, uh, the, 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 real, the real McCoy, one of his most brilliant essays, because he was a brilliant writer. Brilliant essays is, 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 is a uh, long essay on the Rambam. It's called Shilton Hasechel. It's very famous. Translated in 1922, The Supremacy of Reason. And it's a very, as far as writing is concerned, a very good writer. There's my monodies, your monodies, his, and hers and ours. As he constructs, in a very eloquent fashion, my monodies to Moscow. Right? When I say Maimonides of Moscow, he can't say the Rama was not from, never he lived in the 1100s, you know, everybody was a from time, what can you do? But he enthroned reason as the supreme principle in life and in Judaism, and therefore we today, he would say, who have a better understanding of reason, so we don't have to follow all these kind of laws that the Maimonides was into. This article and articles like it were pillars of the late Haskalah, were pillars as is the case with the Hanam, of cultural Zionism, which means the Apikursisha branch of Zionism. Um, they were powerful literary evocations of the argument that there's a strong tradition within Judaism uh, for this kind of approach. As of all, I just read you, by the way, a passage which says the average from guys just walking around looking for the palace, the ones who's, who has enthroned reason and is educated in metaphysics, not in Baba Kama. He's the one that gets into palace, correct? And there are other passages he's able to assemble in this fashion. These were very strong issues for yeshiva boys in places like Tells and Slobodka and Mir and some other places in this very interesting 30 years or so prior to the First World War. I spoke about it a little bit earlier, this past winter, but uh, this was the peak period. If you know anything about the history of Lithuanian yeshivas, when the boys were interested in what's going on out there in the world, and the European world, the Western world, was cooking with new ideas. Uh, some of these ideas were completely external ideas, like communism, for example. Some of these were internal ideas, like Zionism, in many different forms. Okay? And one of the most, uh, what should I say, lethal or potent of these forms would be what I just described. Uh, what is the antidote? <laughs> this is funny. What is the antidote in the intellectualist sense to everything I just read in this book? This. You understand? It's uh, everything that he describes over here is built on a interpretation of metaphysics, as brilliant as the Rambam obviously was. Uh, the all-crushing critic of metaphysics, which was his famous title, Alza Marmala Critique, from this metaphysics, from this metaphysics uh, was uh, Kant. I think that this is why, I don't know, but I, th it struck me that this is what's going on with Rohana Wasserman, of all people, being interested in the critique of pure reason and having read of Immanuel Kant. If you know when he was living, if you know the issues that were going at that time, actually it's a very from kind of thing. He's looking for the secular, unanswerable, set of arguments to destroy any kind of muscillic reinterpretation and reconstruction of Judaism. They're literally deconstructing Maimonidean metaphysics in places like the dormitory that tells yeshiva, not for the purpose of deconstructing Judaism, but the exact opposite, for displacing metaphysics as the basics of Judaism with uh, what I'll call in one word, misera. Um All this, I'll just conclude now, all this uh, jumped at me, and I know, as I said before, uh, where would my mother be, where would he be, where would a lot of people be if they followed the Kantian cr cr critique of practical reason? On the other hand, uh, my mother and all the people in that generation were very truthful people. Truthful people as the traditional Judaism is, uh, perhaps blunt. Um, my mother was plenty blunt, and maybe your mother was too. But uh, uh, 
it's, I'll just conclude by saying that I've told a story in the past that uh, my mother found herself at the end of the war hiding this monastery for a while uh, for a variety of circumstances in uh, late 1944, or early 45. And uh, the nuns and the, or the sisters who, who took her in did a big mitzvah. Uh, they're risking their lives. Uh, they're not going to take that away. On the other hand, they always want to do a mitzvah to try to bring her to see the truth of Christianity. After all, they didn't mean bad, they meant well. And she told me many times, I thought she told Judy all those, she used to always tell them the same thing. She says, listen, I'm not in my mind, I'm not a big theologian, I'm not a big scholar to understand all those kind of things. I just understand that if we had great people and they knew these kind of arguments, they must have had a reason and, you know, get off my back. And it turns out <laughs> the dots are connected in unexpected ways. And I'll ask you if you'll say Emily Rothman will conclude. Thanks very much. I'll give you some. Emily 